Hi guys, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about the things that I, not the things, but the main thing that, oh shit, uh, makes me love and at the same time hate film photography. So film photography for me is, is, is an interesting hobby. Um, I don't I don't professionally shoot film photography. Um, I, I, I've, I've worked as a professional photographer before, but using mostly uh, digital cameras. Um, I, I have never had the experience of having like a proper client and shoot film photography only for that client and, and have everything uh, in, in having the need to have everything completely organized and whatnot. So the film photography for me is is mostly um, an, an experiment, an ongoing experiment. So I try whatever I think it's funny or interesting or cool or whatever makes my brain juices move around and and I follow that so it's basically having fun the whole time so that's that's what I try to convey on the channel uh, I hope I hope I uh, I'm able to uh, convey that anyway most of the time I'm thinking about how can I do something that's interesting for me but might also be interesting for you so that's why you should the should film episodes and go outside and take some pictures or invite some friends sometimes I try new cameras uh, most of the time I try new cameras, sometimes I try new film emulsions and whatnot. Now the main thing that uh, I like and dislike about film photography, at least in the way that I use it, in the way that I experience it, is some degree of unpredictability, which means sometimes I get amazing results and sometimes the results are not so great. Sometimes, uh, I don't know, the, the, the film emulsion is not working great or the developing isn't working or it, it's weird. Sometimes I develop the same rolls in the same tank at the same time using the same thing because it's the same tank and both results are completely different. So there is a, there's a certain space of unpredictability that it's both cool and dangerous at the same time. So to convey this, I want to show you a little, I want to I wanna make a story time. So there is a YouTuber called Sydney. Sidnap? Yeah, Sidnap. Uh, she's a really cool girl. She's super funny. She's super pretty and she uploads videos not very frequently, but every time she does, I always get a good laugh and she has a really dark and gritty sense of humor. So um, I'm subscribed to her and I always have a great fun every time she uploads a video, which is like once a year or something. I, ho I hope she uploads more. So. Uh, I follow her on Instagram and I saw that she was in Brighton and I was like, oh man, Sydney's in Brighton, I'm gonna write her so maybe she'll be up for a photo session. So I wrote her and she was like, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm, I'm here with my boyfriend, we could we can make a photo session. I was like, yeah, cool, I'm, I'll come over with Fran and we can, we can shoot around the pier and have some fun and whatnot. So my idea was to compare two film emulsions of Vision 3. So I grabbed two cameras, I grabbed a Minolta X500 and a Minolta X700 I took both cameras and went to Brighton with Fran. It was it was a nice trip. It's always fun to go to Brighton, even though it's super crazy expensive. Uh, but it's it's a it's a fun place, nevertheless. And we were there. Sydney was super friendly. Um, she was a great sport, and I, I took some pictures. And while it was fun and all, the big problem arose later on when I developed the pictures. The big problem was that my Minolta X seven hundred has a problem, I don't know if it's the light meter or what the hell it is, but it's it's shooting two stops underexposed and, and I thought, oh, maybe it's just me, it's my developing process and then after uh, Sydney's video, I, I decided, okay, it's not me, it's just the camera is underexposing two stops. So that was that was a bummer. One of the rolls was completely, it's not completely underexposed, but it, it was heavily underexposed. And the other roll, the emulsion was not Good. It wasn't, I don't know what happened, but when I developed it, it looked really weird. Um, it had some strikes around. If you see this picture taken with the uh, 200T, uh, it looks underexposed, but it looks okay. You can tell what is there. But then if you see this other picture, which is basically the same setup taken with the 250D, it looks like crap, the development was exactly the same. So at least in that regard, it's, it's not, there's another problem. And I already shot another roll, actually two rolls I shot with the same camera and, and these didn't happen. So what I mean and, and the main thing of this story is I wanted to shoot a shoot film episode with Sydney and just show you, oh man, this is the results and this is how it works and this is how it doesn't work. And, and I used a corrective filter with the 200T and I tried to compare it with the 550D uh, just to see how different the emulsions were and if you could achieve similar results 
and it, that that was a really nice experiment that I was able to do later on. But but the main thing of the episode, which was how do two different film emulsions work, uh, that that wasn't achieved at all because of this thing. If you mess up and you like fail in something, you learn a lot. So. This experience taught me that I, uh, next time I have the opportunity of shooting somebody uh, who's not coming to the UK usually and I really want to do something interesting with that person, I should be more prepared. I'm kind of not sad, but I wanted to make like good pictures for her so she'll be super happy about it and it didn't happen. But, you know, well, sometimes you just fail and, and, and I failed this time. And I enjoy about film photography the fact that it, it allows me to fail and, and have some knowledge of my failures and understanding the whole process, uh, which is not the same with, with, a, with a digital camera, which if the camera fails, it's just an object failure and that's it. Like in here, I'm in charge of the whole process. I take the pictures, I select the emulsion, I develop the pictures, I dry the pictures, I scan the pictures. And in every single step of the long way of having your picture uh, in your computer, there's, there are some downfalls in the way. So you might fail in any of these situations and if the camera is not properly working or if the emulsion is not properly, uh, has not been properly stored or if you, you know, you develop in the wrong way or you scan it in the wrong way, then the, the pictures won't look good at all. So you have to have everything correctly settled, which makes sense uh, for people who want to have everything under control, which is exactly the opposite of me. Um, I enjoy not having so much control and see what, what, what happens with the whole film thing. Um, I, I, I truly think that's, that's what makes me feel interested in this. There's some kind of unpredictability that makes you feel alive or, or, or there's always something new that could happen and you need to be ready for that. Um, I, I, as a final point, I remember I went to the Berlinale. I don't know if you know the Berlinale. It's a, it's a festival. It's a film festival in Germany, in Berlin. And in the Berlinale, there was this. Uh, there was the, the director of photography uh, who works with Bernard Herzog. He said that the main thing that made him shoot in film and why he enjoys more shooting in film is because as a director of photography, as a cameraman, as a director, you need to have a vision of what you want. And you have you need to have everything set to achieve that vision and the only confirmation you have will arise months later once the film is developed so you need to have it, it doesn't have necessarily to do with control but to be like super ingenious in what you're trying to get and to play the puzzle game in your mind of the amount of light the correct exposure the right way of moving things and whatnot so you you if the more you shoot with film the more you develop a vision I think that's a really romantic way of explaining one of the things that makes me love film photography. Um, sure, th there's always the unpredictability factor and, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I mean, you can do things about it. You can try to systematize everything and try to have everything nailed down. But if you're not like that and I'm not like that, and if you're at least at some level as chaotic as me, then, then you, probably, you probably enjoy the whole chaos of the process and the whole not knowing uh, not not having the absolute certainty and certain knowledge of what you're going to get. Um, that being said, I always try to have some kind of consistency, otherwise I, I wouldn't be able to shoot as much. So at least I'm training and I'm trying to get better at it. So yeah, I just wanted to give you my perspective on the interesting things uh, about film photography and what I like and what I dislike. I hope this video was interesting to you. Uh, it took me a long time to decide if I should film this or not, um, because I don't I don't know if my experience shooting the, uh, the the failed video with Sydney will be of any help to anybody. I hope this gives you courage uh, if you fail, if you try to do something with film photography and then it it, it absolutely bombs. Uh, it's alright. We we all fail. I I fail a lot, uh, and and that's alright. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have an amazing day. Um, and I hope to see you around next week for another shoot film episode in which I will be shooting the XA3. Uh, this is a camera that a lot of you suggested. It's a really nice camera and um, it has a really nice shutter. 
and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like this. Uh, I don't know if you're gonna love the episode, but I, I, I don't like self-promoting at that level, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna enjoy this camera and what I have to say about it. Um, it ticks a lot of boxes that I was, I was hoping to be ticked. Uh, and that sounds weirdly sexual. So I will just stop talking and uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week. Keep shooting guys.